Good morning, everyone. This is Joy at the Stevens Suburban Homestead. Are you joyful today? Welcome, everybody. I'm just going to let you focus on this sweet little cup real quick while I walk. And every now and then I give you a little tour. We're going out to see the chickens to move them from their uh, coop to their run. Uh, feel free to comment. I'll just give you a little tour of a few things. There's our waterfall and our non-existent lettuce garden box. Nothing's growing in there even though it's, I planted it twice. So certainly not a lettuce homesteader. Ha ha. Here's some herbs. So, you know, every morning I have different chores. And this morning I really just want to sit around and drink coffee. How about all y'all? <laughs> oh, just having a slow morning. Getting the kid off to school and just looking around. Here's our little doggy fence area. We're hoping um, we don't have any dachshunds anymore. I don't know if y'all are dachshund lovers out there. But ours passed. They were all about the same age. And we're thinking about getting a sulcata tortoise from a rescue all right so here we go we're gonna go out so what are y'all doing out there where are y'all from i don't see any comments yet if you can't comment um it's because you're not following me so swipe up and swipe to the right if you have a samsung or if you have an iphone just swipe over to the right and follow and then you can tell me where you're calling from or where you're viewing from and tell me what kind of morning chores do you have to do on your homestead or your property it's always fun to see who's going where, who's doing what. Good morning, girls. Well, I'm doing this all backwards, aren't I? We'll just let them out. Normally, whoa, they're hungry. Normally, I have the run open already. This is a little feather, and this is a little Dr. Seuss. They're all out. You may say, well, ugh, look at that poop. But, um, frankly, if you have backyard chickens, this is a really neat way to do it. See how it's all clean under there? So, I won't do it while I have the camera in my hand because it is chicken poop. But, there's a bin back here, and I just dump it in there, and we put sand, and we put diatomaceous earth, and some other things, and it does not stink. I know that sounds crazy, but I actually don't have to, um, <clears throat> I don't have to empty it. But like one time every two to three months and where I empty that chicka poop is in my compost bin. Because then I compost it and it makes deliciously wonderful healthy dirt. Look at these girls. They're starving. Mama, mama, I'm starving. I'm starving. Come on in, babes. So we do permaculture. And what that means is we kind of work symbiotically together. So we have our chickens in a run that um, is protected, really just keeps them in and keeps them away from the hawks or keeps the hawks away from them. Yesterday, if you can see, I'm going to try to show you. So here's our garden and our run. And there's that, you see that basketball go back there? And then this fence, let me point where that little bird thing is hanging. Hey, Judy. So this fence line is not far away. It's probably like this is about 30 feet of concrete. It's hard to see in perspective. So we're only about 35 feet away. And there was a hawk perched on that fence yesterday just looking at him. And my poor chickens were, ooh, look, they're all in here safe. Come on, Feather. Come on, Fiona. Okay, we only got half in. Anyhow, when the hawk was here, they were all under this. It's so funny. All four chickens were hiding under there. And our little fire pin. This is our smoker. So sad. And that's what happens. I mean, hawks are scary. Okay, look at them. It's not even Friday. We got a little fluffy butt Friday. <laughs> come on, Feather. Come in. So we put them in here. They till. They eat things. They obviously poop. And um, what that does is it prepares our garden bed. This is an actual garden bed. See? Look. Actual gardens. And so when they stay in here for about a month to two months, just depends, uh, going into the winter, we may not move them as much because we aren't planting a new garden bed every month in the winter. Come on, Feather. Uh, we plant new gardens every month because we're only a family of three. So, you know, we have, there's the okra, black eyed peas, and then, you know, actually we started out thinking we were going to do one garden bed a month, but we ended up doing like two to three because we family three, we still can eat more. Um, anyway, this is pretty much what I do in the morning. I come out and I move the chickens, which is a little more trouble. If I had a coop, that's the coop, 
that had a run attached to it, I wouldn't have to do this. They could just come out all by themselves. Oh, let me turn the water over. But if you want to practice permaculture, which even though it's a little more trouble today, actually has quite a few benefits. Um, it's just a really nice way to live together. And everybody, you know, these chickens do the work for us. There's little ashes there. We put in there to help them keep mites down. And it doesn't smell in here. I will say when it rains, because it's hot and humid in Houston, <clears throat> that there's an essence for about a day. That's all I'm calling it is essence. Um, that I am aware of from about 10 to 15 feet away from the run. But in general, it doesn't smell. It seems really crazy. How can you have like a compost that's um, rotting your vegetables? And how can you have a poop bin and have chickens and have no smell? But if you take good care of it by using straw and using... Uh, sand to absorb moisture, diatomaceous earth, and like I said, we put in ashes. See if you can see those again. They swoosh them all around. Look, that's a perfect example of how they clear the dirt and clear the land. Um, and for some reason, it just doesn't smell because it's nature. I mean, when you go through a forest, it doesn't stink, right? Because it's nature. It's, it's rotting, but it's rotting in the right way. So if you want to just get a quick idea, because we clearly have an escapee, um, we will take this garden bed. We actually have a new, another cantaloupe growing. I do not have a cover on this bed, which is terrible, because that's why these look like we're stopping. Sorry about that. Here's a cantaloupe. It's so cute. But you see how these are not supposed to look like this. They're supposed to look perky and happy like this. But the chickens got in here, so I'm going to put a hoop. See the hoop there on that bed? I'm going to put a hoop. And it has netting. I'll just kind of take a look right here if you can see the netting. This keeps birds from eating things like our figs. Uh, but it keeps the chickens out. <clears throat> I did a video a little bit back showing a little bit of this. But like we have a little weight. Just PVC or random um, wood. And then you can get in to do your weeding or harvesting. So sometimes I'll do that in the morning. I just kind of check things out. Make sure that, yep, still housing aphids here. Excellent. Just kidding. Um, now's the time when the monarch butterflies come back through. So even though I want to cut these aphids off by cutting the milkweed, I was encouraged yesterday. So there's milkweed over there. And then I'll try to go slower. Milkweed right there. That's the only plant that monarch butterflies will lay their uh, larvae on. And they're about to come back through to go back up to California from Mexico. No, wait, hang on. Winter. Okay, they're going from California, excuse me, to Mexico, duh, and they will lay larvae, and then those butterflies will actually die, because the butterflies live about one and a half years, and then the larvae that will eat my milkweed, uh, down to the nub I hear, will uh, pupate, I think is what you call it when it goes to a chrysalis. And then it will, they will hatch out and they'll fly to Mexico. And that will be the new set of monarch butterflies that will go back, come back up here. So even though those aphids are really harassing the milkweed, it's better that I leave it there because they need the leaves to survive. So anyway, normally I would be done by now. I also cut um, my crops in the morning so I, because it's not so hot. You might be able to tell it's not that sunny. So I will harvest the okra that's over here. You can see the pretty flowers on it. This chicken's just not going to come in really easily, so I might as well just do my business. I keep my tools in a mailbox. It's so cute. It's our old mailbox. I painted it. And um, obviously, if it's good enough for the mail, it's good enough for my string and my little uh, markers. And then uh, these are my little, like, where I'm growing. And the string, because you got to tie things all the time on there. If you're a homesteader or a backyard farmer or even just a little bit of a gardener, you always need some kind of string and scissors or clippers. And uh, here's a tip. Don't leave them in the dirt. Wah, wah. <laughs> anyway. Oh, look, feathers over there again. So instead of cutting, let's see if I can get her in. Yesterday she did this too. I don't know. Maybe she's getting to the point where she's ready to lay eggs and they get a little bit more independent. Feather, come on. Come on, Feather. Just like kids in the sense that, uh, only in the sense of this, not like other children don't write me letters or mean emails or something, but, uh, you know, as things mature and get older, they're more independent. That's all I meant. Okay, so let's go over to the okra. 
Looks like I have a field of flowers down here on my grass, doesn't it? Haha, <laughs> that's because I do. That's not supposed to be there. We have St. Augustine here in Houston. Okay, so look, there's some. This is a. We can do growing tips on okra. Too small. Perfect size. And look at these fun things I did. I skipped a couple um, accidentally. And when they started to get too big, take a look at how big that bad boy is. I decided, let's just see how big we could grow them. <laughs> so I laugh. My daughter calls them dinosaur okra. Look at how big that is. You can't eat this. But you could dry it or you could just, for fun, just to see how big it is. You know, you got to have a little humor on the homestead. And then here's another one. Yeah, it looks like I've skipped three or four. Oh, you can't see the leaf. Hang on. Wah. And our uh, black eyed peas are dying back a little bit, but I think that's normal. We got a lot of black eyed peas out of them. And I planted them as cover crops over there, like you saw. So they, uh, they're they producing well. I can't cut and talk at the same time, so I better let you go. So that's what some of our morning chores are all about here on the homestead. And uh, if you want to, you can swipe up and to the right on your Samsung and follow us. Or swipe right on an iPhone and follow us. And we will do videos on what's for dinner, what's for breakfast, how to make recipes from your garden. Uh, we do funny garden tips because I make a lot of mistakes. And we have just have so much fun. We don't care. We just fix it and move on. I mean, not mistakes with animals. You want to you wanna make sure you do that right. But, you know, if a few plants or seeds die, it's okay. We don't get too discouraged. We just replant and move on. So here's a happy, beautiful semi-fall day in Texas. I hope you can hear the uh, bugs. It's actually quite fun out here. Quite nice. Here's our orchard. All right. Peace out.